Most people have contact with the NHS from the moment they're born. They look after us at birth and they look after us at the very end, from cradle to grave. So where better to talk about the birth of the NHS 75 years ago than a maternity ward? I'm Sally Lockwood and this is the Sky News Daily. I've just arrived at Whittington Hospital in North London where I'm going to go and talk to some new mums and midwives. Okay, if you just jog your hands for me before we go in. Sure thing. My goodness, I was expecting a lot more noise than this on a maternity ward. But one baby start. They all join in. <laughs> a chorus. <laughs> a chorus of crying. I'm on the Celia ward, which is the postnatal ward here. It's very quiet at the moment. And I'm with Andrew, who's showing us round today. He's just told me that there's been a hospital on this site for more than 500 years, but obviously only in its NHS form for 75. Knock, knock. I don't, I can't knock on this blue curtain. Hello. Hi, I'm Sally. How are you doing? Good. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. So, what are your names? I'm Mark. Uh, my name's Kwesi. And who's this? Uh, this is... Baby, for now. We haven't got a name yet. Yeah, we haven't got a name right now. We're still deciding. A so, girl, yeah. it's a little boy. Oh, my goodness. He's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Kwesi, how are you feeling? Happy now. I feel like the whole experience was very overwhelming. I came in, so I prepared myself. I relaxed. I done, like, breathing techniques. I meditated had like a warm bath, like had to have my herbal tea really to prepare myself because I was really scared. I didn't want to put my baby at risk. So yeah. I came in and um, it just went really bad. From, from the induction to, to actually having him, how long was that period of time? So it was literally one week because we came yeah, in on the Sunday and he was born on Sunday at three minutes past 11. Cressy, you've clearly been through quite an ordeal and it sounds like a lengthy one, but you're, you're lying back on, on the bed here looking yeah. like you're ready for a magazine shoot, yeah. dressed all in white, you look fabulous, with your little baby boy next to you lying on a pillow who's just gorgeous with a thick head of dark hair yeah, and his little hands scratched. covered in his, in his onesie. How would you sum up your birth experience here? Oh, I don't know. I just feel like it was a lot to take on. But with all the care and all of the doctors, midwives and nurses, they've all been amazing. They've all helped. And I'm just really happy and thankful. The doctor, he reassured us from the start. Yeah. He was amazing. Yeah, he was one and of the best doctors ever. And he was so nice to even come and say that he would actually do the C-section for us. We went to go home, but we asked him to stay. We said, because how much Cressy felt comfortable and ease with him, we said, "Is it? would you be possible that you could stay? And he was like, yeah, like, because we've built like a bond, like, you've been here for this long. He was like, yeah, like, I want to do it myself, we used to. And, we, and he actually took the time to stay. And it was like, wow, like, because, he didn't have to do that. He could have just got in his car, I've earned my money today, see you later. Kwesi and Mark speak highly of the NHS staff they've seen. But they say they've noticed rotors are tight and they worry about the NHS's future, which rings true with polling about how most of the British public feel about what will happen to the health service. So the experience was, obviously, at the start, very, very scary. But... Um, Overall, um, there are like a couple of things that could yeah could do with improvement. Improvement. I just felt like um, if the midwives if they, or the doctors if they had a bit more midwife support on the ward opposite us, where in this sort of scenario, it's not the big things that counts. It's the small little things. Just someone popping their head in and just seeing, are you okay? How are you feeling today? This night, like there was one day we got left for like nine hours, yeah. no one coming and checked or nothing. So Not I said, just us, the other ladies like, on the ward like as well. The whole ward, there weren't really much communication. So I just said, like going forward, I like I do understand that everyone's under stress and understaffed and that, but just the small little bits to make the mum's head at ease, just 
pop your head in and just say, how are you today? How's everything? Do you need a glass of water? Do you need this? Yeah. Just to make their life a bit more easier. Yeah, but That's the only improvement I would say. But at the same time, we do understand that they are also worked off their feet. Yeah. And it's, it's really hard for them to obviously be in different wards because there's such a shortage. So yeah, I think communication is very important. It's vital, isn't it? Yeah. But all the midwives have been amazing. But, yeah, like everyone, all of them have been the second team, to none. The whole team. Like it's just perhaps not enough of them. Yeah, that's what it is. That's yeah. what it does come down to. Like all of them have been. They have gone beyond beyond to coming in, helping us and all that. But as you said, there's just not enough. And if there is young people out there that would like to be a job that is very rewarding, I would say step into this because me being here for this week, I've I've learned a lot myself, and I've realised wow, like. This is a really, really wonderful job for people to be helpful with everyone. Are you kidding? You sound like a pro now. Maybe you should change careers. Kwesi told me, as a black woman, she was scared about inequality and not without reason. A report from MPs recently found maternal deaths are four times higher in black women compared to white women. I kept saying to my partner that I am scared I'm so scared to go for a caesarean because I could die. But he didn't believe me. He thought that I was, like, uh, exaggerating. And I explained to him, for some reason, sometimes, um, you know, black women have a higher chance of dying through childbirth. So I've heard of a few women that have died, and they have been black. Um at childbirth and not only the mum died the baby died too so it was just a bit frightening and do you think that makes childbirth that much more scary for black women yeah it definitely does so i feel like if you do have like a doctor that can speak to the mother that is preparing to go to have a baby for cesarean it's nice for the lady to be put at ease and and all the questions that she wants answered answered by the doctor so she knows exactly what the steps are going to be when she goes under the knife or you know the the pain relief that she's going to receive the aftercare hello postnatal ward midwife speaking how can i help the midwives in the postnatal ward are clearly busy um but we're going to try and grab a quick word with some of them so we're just going to hang out by their desk uh, which has a shelf packed with thank you cards. My name's Kelly, I've been a midwife since COVID 2020. Oh my goodness, what a time to start. I know, yeah, it was to come in, so at the end of my student years, I was asked to step in and get paid for it as well because there was no staff due to COVID and all the yeah, staff members. And how have you found the job? Amazing. I absolutely love it. I love being the advocate for women and their babies. It's just the most amazing job ever. What's your average day here like? Well, it varies. So some days it can be absolutely lovely and you feel like you can provide, you know, um, the amount of care that you want to. And other days it's really manic and there's not enough of us to provide that care when it's an absolute full ward. But we do, like I said, try our best to provide equal care to every woman. And, and what's that like? That, that sounds pretty tough when you have those days. It's really tough and it can drag you, you know, down. But we've got a really strong team up here who keep each other going and we all support each other, which is the most important to us. Oh, it looks like it's lunchtime on the natal ward. We'll make room for the trolley. Good morning. You finished? Can I pack the tray? Um. I've just come down to the birth centre, which is a midwife-led unit. It's different to the labour ward. It's where women can come to have their babies, either in water, there's big bathtubs in some of the rooms, there's also bouncy balls, uh, but essentially it's a midwife-led experience uh, without medical intervention. If you need any sort of epidural or you need inducing, then that all happens on the labour ward. We're just going to go and meet one of the new mums here. She just woke up. Oh, really? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. This is the best time. Oh. Hi, I'm Sally. Hi. Is it Irina? Irina. Oh, Irina. Oh, Good to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and who's, who's this little one? What's her name? Alexandra. Her name is Alexandra. Alexandra. Oh my 
goodness, she is absolutely tiny. How old is she? Well, she's one day old. Is it one day? At one yeah, o'clock, she at one be o'clock one day. she's gonna be one day. <laughs> yeah. Well, her pipes are working well. Um, and is this your first baby? It is. Yes. And, and how did you find the experience overall? It's painful, but it's not as painful as we, as I was thinking, at least. It was painful. Um, the most painful part were the contractions and the pushing. And then once she started coming out, it was okay. You just, you just want her or him in your arms. You know, so. And obviously, you know, you hear all the time about the NHS suffering with a staff shortage, funding shortages. Didn't, it doesn't sound like you felt that at all in terms of your experience. I didn't feel it, no. But I'm sure there are, there are some issues since people talk about it. But, yeah, but in terms of what you experienced here, it, it felt like what well, sounds like a gold standard treatment. Exactly. Exactly. It was absolutely, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, when the actual birth was happening, um, because my, my contraction slowed down, there were maybe four or five people coming into the room to check and they were all consulting and it didn't feel like there was not enough people at that moment. Um, and Irina, you're, you're from Belarus and Alessandra, you're from Italy. Yeah. Um, so you, obviously you now live in the UK and you've, you've had your baby here. Um, what does the NHS mean to you? You know, after this experience, um, really, really good feelings. And it, it means security, probably. It means uh, I trust it, for sure, after what I've been through and how it all went. <gasps> Hello, darling. And of course, none of that happens by magic or by accident. I'm sitting in a huddle with uh, two of the midwives who work here at the hospital in one of the um, rooms on the in the birth centre. I'm on a birthing ball, bouncy bouncy birthing ball to chat to Adina, who has um, won midwife of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Adina? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> And I'm also with Gabriella, who's a trainee student midwife. Hi, Gabriella. Hi. So let's start with you first, Adina. How long have you been a midwife? So I've been a midwife at Whittington for about 18 years. Um, I came to work at Whittington initially as a staff nurse. And every time I was coming down from my ward, I just used to see labeled and I'm like, I am definitely going to be a midwife. And I grew in my role as a midwife, which I love very much. I love our mothers, I love our babies, and now I'm a labeled um, coordinator. And this year I won my long service at Whittington for serving 15 to 20 years at Whittington Hospital. Many babies along the journey. It's been an amazing journey, really. And Adina, in the 20 years that you've been a midwife, how has the birthing experience changed on the NHS for, for mothers and for midwives? Um, I think there's been quite a, a marked um, difference in midwifery care, uh, definitely. As the years went on, um, the, the care has improved quite a lot. Obviously, there are issues here and there, but... I think our experience has really brought a lot of changes to to the care that we deliver in in general over the years. Um, you know, just listening to you, Adina, there's absolutely no doubt that you absolutely love your job. Mm-hmm. What are the tough bits about your job? Um, I think the long hours can be quite tough, especially if you're busy. But I think overall we really don't concentrate so much on the hours. We're just concentrating on on the outcomes that we get at the end of a full day, basically, or whether it's a night shift or a a day shift. Of course, you know, we've heard a lot from nurses and NHS staff. They feel undervalued and they're not paid enough and there's not enough help, there's not enough staffing, there's not enough resource. How much is that an issue for midwives as well? I think... Obviously, it does have an effect on us, but I think 
when the last um, strikes were, were arranged, we didn't take part, which, I, f which um, I think it shows our dedication to our women. Yes, uh, pay is part of um, the whole morale towards you know the, the level of care that people deliver. And obviously staffing is an issue. But like this year, um, recently I took part in the interviews, which is to help our our numbers of midwives go up. And I think people are positive that it's going to improve our our morale and obviously the care that we, we give at the end of it all. But the pay issue, it is a big issue with um, everyone. It's not always about money, but yes it will be good obviously if if that area is explored more so that midwives are paid better yeah. for the services that we render we hear about recruitment and retention being an issue in almost every nhs department uh, but gabriella of course you've chosen to sign up uh, very recently to become a midwife what made you choose to go into this line of work with the nhs as a student you know, helping someone at the day is what puts my, put a smile to my face. If I feel like I did my job as a student to help someone and listen to them, I am more happy than that. If I didn't, I would feel so bad that I didn't. I would reflect on that and then be like, what should I do to improve? Or ask the lady that took care of the mother, what could I improve on to see what I can do for the next person? But in overall, every day is a different day for me to learn from the midwives, the mom, babies, anyone around me can learn from that and then use it to improve the care that I provide. Well, certainly sitting here bouncing on a birthing ball um, and looking at this massive uh, birthing pool in, in the private room with you as midwife of the year, Adina, certainly I think you know most people would opt for this experience with you if they could, um, if they were going to have a baby. But of course, so many people don't have have all of that on hand and you do you do hear there have been various scandals when it comes to other maternity units around the country with the depth of experience that you have as a, as a midwife when you read about these scandals um, and hear about them what's your takeaway on what's going wrong I think it's scary yes definitely um but it makes you think and reflect on every day on the care that you deliver. You're like, okay, let's aim and let's um, fight to give the best safe care that we can because no one wants to find themselves in that situation whereby they are, the, your hospital, your maternity unit is in the headlines just for the wrong reasons. And also it's, it's, scary for the women knowing oh my god my care is going to be delivered it's this place which is unsafe so for us i think it moves you more towards being a very safe practitioner and being extra cautious when you deliver care and you know just trying to give your 100 percent you know level of care just to prevent all these um mishaps incidents is happening do you feel that you have everything you need to give the care that you want to your patients? And, and if not, what do you want in order for the NHS to be the best it can be in the future? Certainly, staffing is a big thing at the moment. It's, it is a big thing. And as long as we do have more staff, we do have the numbers that we need for every shift, then we we are guaranteed to deliver safe care. That's that's one. And certainly also people are able to, to work with smiles, you know, on their faces because they are not pressurized too much. So because sometimes we are stressed because like maternity midwifery is very unpredictable. So you don't know who's coming, what's coming next. And obviously if you're poorly staffed, then it has an impact on, on people's morale and then it becomes unsafe uh, for us to give the high level of care that we need. And obviously with more funding into our NHS, into our maternity units, then we are able to have the right equipment. We are ever able to have enough equipment that we need. We are able to have more modernized maternity units and that will help the women also to, to achieve the 
the level of care that they expect from the NHS, which at the moment, yes, we do try, but obviously there's always those, at the moment, staffing is a big thing and it has an impact on the care that we finally deliver sometimes. And, and Gabriella, you're very much the future of the NHS, a future midwife of the year in the making, I'm sure. Um, what do you want for the NHS in the next 75 years? A place where everyone's appreciated more and more each shift, which is not, not that I'm saying that no one's appreciated. Everyone here is appreciated for the good works they do. And as a student, I see it and it makes me want to be more and more like that, where I don't want to come into work feeling like, oh, there's another shift. I want to come into work saying, yes, another baby's coming on the way and mum is here to deliver. We will do this safely and hopefully super sailing. Well, one of the reasons we're talking about maternity today is it's a department in the NHS that has been in the headlines a lot over the last few years and not always for good reason. Last year, there was the Ockenden Review that found catastrophic failings at Shrewsbury and Telford NHS Trust led to the deaths of more than 200 babies and nine mothers over a 20-year period until as recently as 2019. Stephanie Snow has written about 75 years of the NHS and knows a thing or two about midwifery. She's even a consultant on the TV show called Midwife. Well, before the NHS, a lot of babies would be born at home. Um, mothers would have to pay for a midwife or a doctor to attend. And so, yes, in some circumstances, they relied on local people to support them. And birth was very much a home affair. And these local people, very often local women who would help other women with childbirth, weren't necessarily always trained. They just happened to be um, the best person with the most knowledge in the local area. Yes, I mean, healthcare at that point could be very much what was described as make do and mend. You know, so people who had knowledge, who'd sort of built up a bit of experience through helping others, you know, there would often be someone in a village or a town that people would go to when they had health concerns. And obviously birth was one of those. Of course, we know that nurses and midwives in the NHS do a wonderful job. But the NHS, of course, isn't without its problems. And there have been a number of scandals over the years when it comes to maternity units. Do you think that women and babies are more at risk now due to staffing issues and funding issues within the NHS? I think one of the things that is consistent in what women appreciate and find makes the most difference across the generations is continuity of care from the caregivers. So, you know, particularly in birth during the sort of antenatal care, during labour and childbirth itself, the thing that women see as making the most difference is actually having a strong emotional connection with the midwives and other staff who are looking for you know looking after them so obviously you know at the moment we know the nhs is really struggling with these enormous workforce shortages um which apply across all services and so yes you know this is definitely going to affect women's experience of birth I mean, another major concern now, there is growing evidence that there are inequalities in health outcomes between different groups with different um, ethnic heritages. And, you know, there have been recent reports which really establish that the outcomes between white women and brown and black women, they have worse experiences, worse outcomes. Um, you know, and this is, this is something that we just can't tolerate. We do need to address that. What's needed? What's needed to improve things, you know, when it comes to that healthcare inequity, when it comes to race, but also when it comes to safety for mothers and babies? I mean, I think the good thing is that um, last summer, July 2020, we did have the Women's Health Strategy um, published. And that acknowledged that there had been long neglect of women's health, including birth. So I think having had that now and also all the evidence that has come from the COVID-19 pandemic about the disproportionate 
uh, um, impact of COVID on communities and NHS staff with sort of ethnic heritage. Again, I think it's one of those major issues going forwards, and it will rely on workforce shortages being addressed and many more deep conversations between women and caregivers to make sure that women's voices are at the centre of health policy and practice change. As someone who's studied about and written about the NHS in great detail, where do you see the NHS in five years' time? Of course, there's lots of speculation about healthcare being privatised in the UK. The NHS has a history of sort of crises, you know, through the different decades. Um, I mean, I would say from the information that we have, the feedback we've had from our interviewees, there is still a strong and persistent public commitment to the vision of the National Health Service as a service which can provide care for everybody, regardless of their ability to pay. But, you know, the NHS has got a lot of solid, um, you know, improvement history behind it that can take it forward to a positive future. Time for us to go now. Everyone here is super busy, lots of babies to birth. But on the 75th anniversary of the NHS, my thanks to everyone at Whittington Hospital and to Stephanie Snow and to you for listening to the Sky News Daily with me, Sally Lockwood. This episode was produced by Emma Ray Woodhouse with Alex Eddin. The editor was Paul Stanworth.